Taste at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Thursday. Yay, almost Friday, May 6th. We're going to talk to Justin about your forecast. Look ahead to Mother's Day weekend coming up. But first, a lot of folks watching our newscast uh, that live here in South Texas love hunting and fishing. We have good news. It appears the feds are thinking about a, a huge expansion of hunting and fishing here in the U.S., including Texas. That's right. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Sur Service recently announced a proposal that would be the largest expansion of opportunities for access to hunting and fishing. So the move is part of the Department of Interior's efforts to increase the amount of recreational access on public lands. According to a press release from them, the uh, new opportunities would include turkey hunting and sport fishing in Florida at the Florida Panther National Wildlife Refuge. The proposal also aims to open migratory game bird hunting to certain areas of Texas along with big game hunting. Areas of Virginia would also be opened for similar activities. And so here is a quote from Martha Williams, a service principal deputy director there. We are committed to ensuring Americans of all backgrounds have access to hunting and fishing and other recreational activities on our public lands. Hunters and anglers are some of the most ardent conservationists and the, play an important role in ensuring the future of diverse and healthy wildlife populations. Another proposed change would allow fishing at the Green Lake National Fish Hatchery up in the beautiful state of Maine. Uh, Fish and Wildlife has already proposed changes ready for the upcoming 2021-22 hunting seasons. The department website has a full list of the planned expansions. Don't have details on how this affects us here in Texas. Well, we can get some more guidance from Texas Parks and Wildlife in the near future. But overall, good news. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis will sign into law a controversial election reform bill today. The bill will limit the number of drop boxes for hand-delivered voting, restrict third-party voter registration efforts, and require voters to sign up for vote-by-mail in more frequent intervals. The Texas Senate passed a bill that would let Texans 21 and older carry a handgun without a license. The bill now goes back to the state house with amendments. President Joe Biden will visit Louisiana today to talk about the American Jobs Plan. The president will speak at Lake Charles and then tour the Carrollton water plant in New Orleans. The European Union is letting the U.S., Canada and Norway join its military mobility project that is aimed at speeding up the deployment of troops and equipment around Europe. G7 leaders are warning China not to escalate tensions with Taiwan after a spike in military maneuvers around the island. Representatives from Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the UK and US said in a joint statement that they support peace between China and Taiwan. The Bear County Sheriff's Office investigating a massive gambling operation on the city's north side. Deputies found hundreds of illegal gambling machines, narcotics, cash, and found a teen who could be a human trafficking victim. Canada is now the first country to approve the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 12 to 15. The U.S. and Europe are reviewing the vaccine and could green light it for that age group soon. The lights will go back on Broadway in New York as tickets go on sale today. New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo says shows will resume starting September 14th. SpaceX successfully launched and landed its futuristic starship in Boca Chica, Texas. The company hopes to use the spacecraft to send people to the moon and Mars. And that's today's 9 at 9. Yeah, many of us were watching the uh, the video of yesterday's test flight and the <laughs> landing and kind of watching and waiting oh. and nothing happened. A safe yes. and, uh, landing there for the spacecraft. So yeah. good news down there in Boca Chica. Yeah, absolutely good news out there and good news for us here at home. We have beautiful weather once again. I mean, it really is all good news, guys. We got the drop monitor in this morning. Things look much, much better. We're going to show you that coming up here in just a few minutes. But this weather is just gorgeous. 50s and 60s again this morning. We'll see temperatures warm into the 80s this afternoon, but right now really nice. 68 northeasterly winds at 8. The uh, dew point is at 56. And the forecast we will call for highs in the mid 80s, 86 here in San Antonio, but sunny skies all day long, light northeasterly winds and still some pretty dry air. Pollen count is in. Molds are still on their way down. They're at 1740. Pecan is low at 30, but I will tell you it's an ozone action day. If you're sensitive to ozone uh, pollution, that's going to be in the air today. 66 Boulevardy, 68 New Braunfels, 62 Bandera, 63 in Tarpley. No cloud cover, sunny skies, 
and there's your high temperature, 86. Again, we're going to look at the drop monitor and look ahead to the weekend, too, coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Right now we're taking a look at backups there at 90 and 410. We've got some sort of incident. It looks like it's affecting the uh, frontage road for the most part. It may even be construction now that I take a closer look at those vehicles. Looks like they're doing some paving work out there in that right lane. We'll keep an eye on this for you again. 90 out near Loop 410. And top stories we are following today. The Bear County Sheriff's Office continues to investigate a massive illegal gambling operation on the north side. It happened at a bingo hall on the 3700 block of Blanco Road. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says the bust, the result of an investigation that's been going on for at least a week. The sheriff also called it the most extensive illegal gambling, op gambling operation found here in decades. Inside the 25,000 square foot building, they found gambling machines, drugs, money, and weapons. Although the SWAT team had been watching things for a while, they still were surprised by what they found. Probably upwards of 100 machines thus far. Uh, those are the operational ones. There's probably another couple hundred non-operational machines, and we're actually gonna crack open all of those machines. Sheriff says they found about a dozen people in various rooms inside that building on Blanco. One of them, a 16 year old girl who they suspect may be a victim of human smuggling. Sheriff Salazar says they plan to question that team. They also will be sorting out what charges, if any, to file against the people who were taken into custody. San Antonio police want your help identifying a man who robbed a Little Caesars pizzeria over on the east side. It happened around 11 Sunday morning. That, take a look at these pictures here of that suspect. Police tell us he went up to the cashier at the store on North New Braunfels, not far from East Houston Street. Investigators say he showed the cashier a gun and asked for money. If you recognize this guy, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. A $5,000 reward is being offered for information that leads to the man's arrest. Today is the last day to register to vote in the city runoff election. Voters will decide five San Antonio City Council races for districts one, two, three, five, and nine. For more information on how to register, check if you are already registered. Go to ksat.com backslash vote 2021. You have until 5 p.m. today to register. Early voting for the runoff begins May 24th and ends June 1st. The runoff election day is June 5th. In your morning headlines, a driver showing off some pretty good driving skills in Washington state. Results of a train hitting a truck just outside Houston and a three year old gets pulled over in a Tulsa neighborhood. David Sears was here with those stories and more. Good morning. Got to watch these youngsters on the road these days. <laughs> three I guess years so. old. Yeah. We'll have that for you in just a second. But first, speaking of driving, take it to Washington state highway 16. That is a car right there. And it, it's going the right direction, but it's just driving backwards. The guy's not trying to be a daredevil, not trying to run from police. He's having a problem with his steering and ended up only able to drive down the highway backwards. His name is Nathaniel Grayson. He was taking emergency action to keep himself and other drivers safe. He was driving his Chevy Malibu when his steering wheel locked up. He did a 360, hit the wall, and then ended up going backwards. He was able to avoid the other cars on the highway. Apparently, this was a problem with the Malibu manufactured back in the early 2000s. When it locked up, he hit the brakes, and that's when he spun. He hit the wall and kept going. He thought he would just get off at the next exit, but it was further than he thought. I'm like, dang, this exit is really far. <laughs> but I'm like, I got this, I got this, take it easy. And I just stay focused, I, I don't look around. But I see cars like driving by. I'm like, do they not notice I'm going backwards? Time just slowed down. And I was just like, I felt like I was just in the matrix. Like I can do this. Really, I was just trying to save my life and make sure nobody else got injured. Mad driving skills in the matrix. Hey, it worked out. He did not get in a wreck and nobody got hurt. And he has a good story to tell. All right, now let's take it to Chicago. You're looking at surveillance camera video from inside Cleo's bar and grill. Somebody walks in front of the bar and then watch out. Here it comes. Hang on for just a second. Oh, there it is. Yep, <laughs> it was coming. That is an SUV crashing right through the front window. There was a 70, 70 year old driver trying to parallel park. He accidentally hit the gas instead of the brakes. Good news. Very few people inside. No one injured. The driver was not sighted. All right, this has to be a terrifying moment. 18 wheeler truck stuck on the track train coming and look out. Bam! Split that truck trailer right in half completely destroyed this happening in Richmond Texas that's just southwest of Houston the good news the driver was out of the cab at the time the bad news there was a huge mess to clean up the truck was hauling bottled water 
The railroad crossing had to be shut down for several hours for that cleanup. All right, now we are in a neighborhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's a pretty young driver taking her frozen convertible for a little spin when all of a sudden police officer shows up, lights are flashing. He just wants to check on the young driver at Leela to make sure she's okay and she's following all the rules of the road. He did stop. Did you have both hands on the steering wheel? Do you have a driver's license? You do? Oh, okay. Well, no, no problem. <laughs> Two hands on the wheel, driver's license ready to go. What are you going to do? The officer actually lives in that neighborhood, so the family knows him and stop just to make sure everything's okay. Got to drive the right way when you're in the driveway, you know. There's, there's rules of the driveway. That's of course. He even helped her put her hands on there. <laughs> That's just great stuff. All right, final this morning. Just, just look at this for a second and see if you can figure this out. All right. It's a weird looking raccoon, David. Yeah. It's That's a skunk. It's a skunk. <laughs> it's walking around on its front paws. It's like doing a handstand. This is taking place in Southwest Florida. The Southwest DOT and the F Stop Foundation has put cameras at culverts and wildlife crossings around the state. There's some biologists who want to learn more about skunks. Didn't know they could pull off that trick. <laughs> I, I want to know that skunk. That skunk's probably a good time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do Texas skunks and Florida skunks do different tricks? I don't know. Maybe we should put some cameras around culverts here in Texas. I, who, I has, who has Steve Brown's number? And oh, cam. right. Time for Critter Cam once again. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you. Right now, 909, about 69 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A candidate for California governor getting a lot of attention for how he launched his campaign. Why he brought a bear with him on the bus tour. A bill that would let Texans carry a gun without a license making its way through the Texas Senate. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune will break down what happens next to that controversial legislation. Later in the show, we are going to introduce you to Miss Perez, a special education teacher from SAISD who is making an amazing impact in her students' lives. And a quick check of the stocks. The Dow is down about 25 points. We'll be right back. We've talked about this quite a lot over the last year or so. The pandemic forced a lot of educators to come up with new and creative ways to do their jobs. Well, this month we are bringing much deserved recognition to some of the amazing teachers in our area. Max Massey introduces us to Iris Bettis, who teaches social needs children at Wilson Elementary in SAISD. Good morning. I just love what I do. So students are students that um, have been uh, are in the autism spectrum or Down syndrome. So they have uh, unique learning st styles. Iris Perez is one of a kind. She goes above and beyond to make sure her students are reaching their full potential. She's a blessing to the students and to the community and to any child who comes in contact with her. I always tell her she could run her own autism center or things like that because she, she has so much wealth of information. Louder. Ms. Perez is the heart and soul of the classroom. Her energy is amazing. Her expertise unmatched. We need honestly more teachers like her that do honestly care from, you know, from the heart. This last year has been unique. How Schools closed down during the pandemic, but that didn't stop Ms. Perez from making sure Good her morning. students had everything they needed to stay on track, morning. working with parents and even making and deliveries. I made copies of all the material, a separate photo for each uh, uh, math reading and a writing, and I delivered it to the parents so they would have the material. The parents and I have a really good uh, uh, communication, we collaborate, there's a lot of teamwork. Ms. Perez has so much passion and enthusiasm for her students, and she says it stems from wanting to see them grow and learn. All children can learn, and the possibilities are endless. I, I can look at these children, and I see, I see their possibilities. I don't see the disability. I see what they can do. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News.
Bravo Very. to her and all educators out there. Hey, don't forget today's National Nurses Day, too. We celebrate yes. uh, those people. They've done some amazing things, especially in the last 12 to 13 months, haven't they? Yes, a shout out to you guys. We appreciate you very much. Justin's here with a pretty good looking forecast. And uh, let's see, I'm looking over your shoulder here. When I see red mm -hmm. on a map, I usually think this has got to be a drought update. Yeah, this is it's got, it's got to be bad, right? Well, we've got some improvements to talk about, actually. It's, it comes as no surprise, right? We got some good rain last week and over the last weekend. And so the improvement across the state is pretty dramatic. Last week, 65% of the state was in drought. This week, 45%. It's really been pared back. And now it's far west Texas where there are still drought concerns and then deep south Texas where we're still seeing some issues. But as we zoom in on our area here, uh, Bear County, still parts of it in a moderate drought, but this is much better than what it looked like last week. And the extreme drought has been pushed south. So a lot of our areas, not out of the drought, but looking a lot better thanks to that rain that we've seen. And a little closer look at Medina Lake, 35% full. It's still not great. Uh, one week ago, from one week ago, we're up about a foot. That's it. Rains didn't do a whole lot to help us there. But uh, we get one more good rain. We could see uh, things improve there at Medina Lake. Uh, the aquifer today is up two tenths of a foot to 665.4. We're closing in on the average. This number has jumped up a lot too. We're up 15.6 feet since Wednesday of last week, April 26th. Uh, so just huge jumps there. We'll see what happens as far as uh, the stages. Uh, Stage two and watering so still hasn't decided on that, but we'll keep you posted outside right now. We've got blue skies, 68 degrees northeasterly winds at about eight miles per hour. A gorgeous morning and temperatures are in the 60s in most spots. 65 Tarpley, 64 Bandera, 63 up there in Comfort, 69 in Pleasanton. Some 70s farther south. Kennedy, Victoria recording some low 70s there. Eventually all of us. We'll get into the 80s today. Very similar to yesterday. The air's fairly dry. Dew points in the mid 50s. You will find some higher numbers as you get closer to the coast. So it does start to get a little bit muggy across some of our southeastern counties. But everyone else, it feels nice outside. And temperatures should make it up to about 86 this afternoon with sunny skies and light northeasterly winds. Do want to pass along that air quality today. Not great. It's an ozone action day. We're in the unhealthy category for those who are sensitive to ozone, asthma, and that sort of thing. So just a heads up there. Here's a look across the state of Texas. A couple showers across the Red River region, but nothing of great consequence. These certainly won't move in our direction. We'll stay sunny. And as you look at the forecast, few clouds tomorrow, some high clouds, no big deal. But moisture does return on Saturday. We'll get some humidity and some drizzle Saturday morning. Sunday, we'll have a dry line. Frontal boundary trying to get a little bit closer, so I can't rule out a storm Sunday evening, but I think most of Mother's Day is going to be just fine. Now, this frontal boundary shifts south. We may see some more showers and storms Monday into Tuesday, and we'll get a stationary boundary, so that can mean some better chances of rain Tuesday into midweek uh, next week. Here's the forecast. 88 tomorrow, 88 Saturday, 93 on Sunday for Mother's Day, just a 20% chance of rain late, and then we'll up our rain chances to 30% by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And maybe we'll get some of these allergens out of the air, Mark. <laughs> maybe. It was the mold or the ozone or something. Some, who knows what. Yeah, maybe it was a combination <laughs> yeah. of everything. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, 919 right now, about 70 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a candidate for California governor used a bear to kick off his campaign. Why he's not happy about all the attention the bear is now getting. And welcome back. It's 923. The race for governor of California looking more like a circus every day, especially since Arena Bear was recruited to kick off one candidate's campaign and star in commercials. Well, now the candidate is complaining about too much bear coverage. CNN's Jeannie Most reports. He's a thousand pound Kodiak bear and he's throwing his weight around. The race to recall Governor Gavin Newsom. California's choice, beauty. Pretty boy. Or a beast. Republican candidate John Cox. I'm a friendly beast. <laughs> rented nine-year-old Tag the Bear for the kickoff of his campaign tour dubbed Meet the Beast. Tag may look a tad vicious, but he was actually opening his mouth wide. How's this for a beastly idea? 
How about we have... To catch treats, mainly cookies, or sometimes to miss them, John Cox, who lost his last race for governor by a landslide, tag tag for the starring role in this campaign commercial. We need big beastly changes in Sacramento. Though when John Cox's bear surfaced with a parody Twitter account, he lamented, why does everyone call me a beast when I want to be beauty? This isn't Tag's first rodeo. He's appeared in TV shows like Yellowstone. And in a Super Bowl commercial for Rocket Mortgage. I'm pretty sure you do not run. To make sure Tag didn't consider running from the press conference, what's known as electrified hot wire was strung, though not turned on. PETA wasn't pleased, saying gone should be the days when wild animals were treated as toys or props, to which John Cox says Tag isn't wild, he was born in captivity. That's a very healthy animal. He guzzled water from a hose. The candidate later complained. The coverage yesterday was all about the bear. The bear he pegged his campaign to. Recall the beauty and elect the nicest, the smartest beast you've ever met. Despite all that roaring, trainer Keith Bauer says Tag's personality is... Just like a golden retriever. He has a sense of humor. He loves to wrestle and play. Behind the candidate's back, he even did some personal grooming, acting more like the beauty, less like the beast. Genimos, CNN. He's a real nice bear. New York. Oh, look at Tag. Now, he may think the bear got all the pub, but it's still publicity. He, that is true. That is true. People they will said be that there's no attention. such thing, right? No such thing as bad. And yeah. the bear is still on the bus, so he's kind of stuck with it. I think so. But I, I think it's funny. He was getting treats. It looked like he was yawning, mm -hmm. you know, in the background while mm, Politics talking. can be a yawner sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. 926 on your Thursday. Let's look ahead to see what's coming up. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's our Spurs. <laughs> they got their fifth straight loss last night in Salt Lake City. David and RJ will join us to discuss. Food scientists in California found <clears throat> there's a potential huge benefit from the grapes in wine that were we that we are missing. How reusing grape skin, seeds, and pulp could make wine the new superfood. Anna Lana Rocha with the Texas Tribune will join us today to break down a few bills that attempt to protect the state's oil and gas industry from efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Let's see what's happening on the roads right now. And we've still got construction with some delays out there on the front of Road 90 at Loop 410. A little bit of a slowdown, but hey, really in the grand scheme of things, not that big a deal. We'll be right back. The Texas Senate has passed a bill that would let Texans carry a handgun without a license. And two bills advancing in the legislature attempt to protect the state's oil and gas industry from efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us now to break down these bills. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. Good to see you. A Republican-led effort to allow Texans to carry handguns without any kind of license cleared what is likely the biggest remaining hurdle in the state capitol Wednesday. The bill's fate remained uncertain heading over to the Senate. Why? Well, because a, a number of uh, Republican senators, it was unclear uh, what the vote would be. It's rare that a vote or a bill comes to the floor without knowing the outcome or ensuring that it will pass. But you did see uh, several in the Republican majority rise up to express concern, the fact that, uh, you know, what it would mean for protecting domestic violence victims, what it would mean, the fact that law enforcement uh in many respects, didn't support it or doesn't support it. You did see the Texas Association of Sheriffs uh, send the bill's author, Charles Schwartner, uh, a letter saying you need to make these tweaks, uh, like you know, law enforcement being able to disarm somebody when they're in custody. Uh, he did so. He proposed those amendments. They passed. It needs final vote today, and then it'll go over to the House, where they could either accept the changes the Senate made or go into conference committee to hash out those differences. But the governor said he uh, he's a indicated that he would sign a bill uh, that gets to his desk. Tell us more about why some in the GOP-controlled uh, chamber are hesitant on this bill. Yeah, I mean, exactly what I was, you know, saying. Uh, several is the law enforcement component, the fact that, you know, they won't know uh, if somebody has really been vetted. You know, the bill's author says, look, this, this 
takes away the licensing requirement or the permit, if you will, but it doesn't mean we can have irresponsible gun owners out there. They'll need to be, you know, trained. But again, without that requirement, it's really the onus is on uh, the individual. And that's the, the concern you see Democrats have as far as law enforcement goes and, and some Republicans. But ultimately, all the Republicans in the chamber did uh, back this bill. It's kind of mounting pressure to, to get it passed and joined about uh, 20 other states that have so-called constitutional carry. All right, Alana, and let's take a look at the two bills that attempt to protect the state's oil and gas industry from efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. As we understand it, one measure is in response to Wall Street and the other to the deadly winter storm. Right. Uh, the Wall Street measure would uh, task the state accountant, the state comptroller, Glenn Hager, with uh, you know having a list of companies that have boycotted the fossil fuel industry and natural gases. Uh, you know, Wall Street is on a push to, to do that uh, and as a way to address climate change. And so through this list, uh, the accountant, uh, the state comptroller, again, would say that, you know, the state is going to divest from these companies, uh, you know, with its pension fund, with its school endowment. The other measure in response to the winter storm uh, would ban municipalities and cities who are looking at what energy uh, sources they're going to put in place when they're building new homes, subdivisions, things like that, and ban them uh, from uh, barring natural gas as an energy resource uh, in doing so. So again, uh, two measures that would uh, protect uh, this vital industry to the state's economy. Alana, another pair of bills would bar the teaching of critical race theory. Why is this a priority this session? Well, you're seeing this in Republican-led uh, legislatures around the, the country, uh, you know, in addressing so-called woke philosophies and critical race theory, of course, is the academic uh, discipline that looks at how race has influenced social and legal systems here in the country. But Texas goes a step further and a measure would essentially bar uh, students or teachers from bringing up Current events and discussing, you know, policy or controversial policy decisions uh, related to that. You've seen groups, of course, education groups come out against this, saying it's an overreach by lawmakers on inflict, you know, uh, civic engagement and, and students being able to discuss something as simple as as uh, current events. But uh, you know, with the Republican majority and, and you know, seeming backer of key players, uh, it's advancing. All right, Alana Rocho with the Texas Tribune. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Taking a look outside with live cam, a nice 72 degrees. Well, actually, I see behind your shoulder, Justin, 68, but either way, it's nice out there. Yeah, we're probably in the 70s now. Things are warming up pretty quickly after what was a cool morning. We started off in the 50s and 60s. It was another great start. Soak it in because we're headed into... Uh, second half of May where temperatures will likely be warmer. Uh, let's look at the numbers this morning. 60 here in San Antonio is what we started out as uh, 49 Kerrville, 49 Fredericksburg. So we were in the 40s in several spots this morning. Now we're seeing temperatures in the upper 60s, close to 70 here in San Antonio. Pretty comfortable across the state, though. And as we look across the country, some fairly cool air, especially as you get up into the mountains. 37 Casper, 48 Chicago. One hot spot down in Florida, still in the 80s there this morning. 84 Orlando, 85 in Miami. There is an air quality alert today, ozone action day. For those who are sensitive to ozone, it's in the unhealthy category today, just a heads up there. Rain chances, uh, we're not having any today or tomorrow, but some slight chances start to show up as early as Sunday. Better chances, I think middle part, or at least uh, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. We'll talk more about that, look at the seven day. Have another glance at Mother's Day too, coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Let's take a look at TransGuide. Looks like we've got a stalled vehicle and uh, maybe a wrecker already on scene out there. 35 at FM 3009. Looks like it is on the southbound side. And OK, another rough night for our Spurs as they lose again in Utah. Not pretty. David and RJ back here to break it all down. And uh, now we're down to seven games mm -hmm. left. Seven yep. games left. And, and it all, does not look good. Yeah, they're, they're all <laughs> tough. It's least. Sacramento, it's Portland, it's Milwaukee, it's New York and New York. I, Brooklyn is New York to me. And then twice against Phoenix. So, and you were talking about earlier, mm. depending on who they sit, because, you know, teams get towards the end of the season, especially yeah. if they're going into the playoffs, one of the contenders, they might start sitting some guys. Yeah, uh, but, we, but we've also been saying, I mean, how kind of sad is that, that, they're, yeah. that we're relying on maybe other teams that thinking about resting guys. I mean, Utah sat their starting backcourt, their all-star player, 
Donovan Mitchell last night and the previous game too. Uh, this was just a, this was bad from the start. I felt like the Spurs really just kind of came out and looked defeated even before tip off. They said Conley too. They, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they said two guys. So it doesn't matter if another team's going to sit guys. They just say, hey, we'll rest our guys against the Spurs and still win. <laughs> Yes. Apparently, yeah. Now this is I, I I don't know what you say about this. This is bad. I mean, I mean Drew Mar- there wasn't a threes. starter <laughs> for the Spurs. Well, I take that back. Four of the big name starters mm-hmm. for the Spurs because Devin Vassell usually doesn't start. Not a one of them got in double figures last night. They didn't play that much because Pop just like you know said, okay, y'all come sit down for a while yeah. because you're not yeah. doing anything out there. Demar had six. Keldon Johnson six. Gaga Pirtle, eight. Mm-hmm. DeJounte mm-hmm. Murray had seven. Mm-hmm. And then Vassell had 14. It's, so, I uh, I, yes, yeah. David, and I added that up. That was 27 points between those four guys. Uh-huh. And the highlight you're watching here, Jordan Clarkson. Look at that. By the way, San Antonio native, Wagner alum right here, yeah. Jordan Clarkson. He had 30 points off the bench for Utah yeah. by yeah. himself. So uh, this, was, uh, this was bad. I initially wanted Stephanie to say, like, well, if you saw Monday night's game, this one is, <laughs> is was a lot worse. <laughs> so, they, shot, they were down they, by 40 points in the Utah second half. Utah shot 41 threes. They averaged, like, 40 mm-hmm. threes a mm-hmm. game, and they shot 41 last night, and the Spurs were, like, 7 of 23. I, it's just, I don't, since the Boston game when they blew the 32-point mm-hmm. lead, yeah. it's just been kind of slowly, it's, it's almost like that just took the wind out of their sails. Who, who do we want to hear from? We're going to hear from DeMar because DeMar has got a little bit of optimism in him, just a little bit. Let's hear what he had to say. Still got what, six games left. Still six opportunities for us to be able to put ourselves in a position to keep keep playing after that. And that's how we got to look at it. You know, it's not over. You know, it sucks. But the only way to get this feeling off is, is redeem ourselves game after game. 261. Did you hear any optimism there? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's hoping there's only six games left. That's his, that's oh, his optimistic view. Wow. Unfortunately, DeMar, okay. there's, there's seven. So you're all right. Yeah, yeah. Seven games. Um, all right. So next game here, taking on the Sacramento Kings, who yeah. have actually won four straight games. So the Spurs initially, we thought we were clear of the Kings. The Kings have won a few games here. And this is really the only game left on this schedule that I think even the Spurs might be favored in, if they're even favored in this game. This just hurts. It does hurt. Let's talk standings, and then I have a question to pose for both of you. Yeah, let's do it. There's the standings. Spurs Mm -hmm. are still in the 10th spot. I mean, they still can get the the play-in game Mm -hmm. because they're still a game and a half ahead of New Orleans, who, like we said before, just as bad as the Spurs, if not worse. And they still have to play the Warriors a couple more times. Right. So those two teams will just beat each other up, and the Spurs will stay right there in the 10th spot unless something happens. The Spurs and are 31 and 34. The yeah. last time that I can remember that they had a losing record other than last year, and last year was the bubble year and all that kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. so you can, but I'm talking about like other than last year, the last time that they had a losing record that I can remember was the year that David Robinson was hurt. Yeah, and before they, they had Tim Duncan, right? And then Timmy came, and then yeah, uh, they were yeah like we never looked back. I mean, I don't know 20, if there's, they're ever going to get another Tim forty-two Duncan in here. or something, and that, but that's yeah. the last time yeah. I remember. Well, that's, they they got to they got to win like more than half of right. the what's left. That's hopeful. Great. So, there we go. The so here's my question. Okay, <laughs> okay. are you ready? Don't, she's trying to cover her eyes. All right. So <laughs> we may lights. our team may claw their way into the playoffs. <laughs> Or they may quietly go into the night uh, at the end of the season here, uh-huh. and that's it. Right. Normally, by this time of the year, with this kind of record, you usually hear some sort of outrage from Spurs fans. They're calling for somebody's head. You know, this guy's not at performing. This coach mm-hmm. isn't performing. Mm-hmm. Have we become complacent as Spurs fans, or is just this the state of pro sports these days? I think you might start hearing some rumblings, at least like on social media from people like uh, what's what's wrong with the Spurs you know even even that question start questioning pop Mm -hmm. as the head coach because I mean he is the leader of this of this yeah if you take a pulse of especially through social media and sometimes that could be a dangerous rabbit hole to get into (laughs) and get out of Uh, but during Spurs games Spurs fans have been very vocal about you know, maybe it is time to uh, pass over the, the the torch, so to say, to, to Becky Hammond. Of course, Pop, look, he's going to make that decision whenever he wants. I don't think there's anyone that's going to tell him, hey, you need to go or this, we need to change, you know, direction here. But uh, it'll be an interesting discussion uh, moving forward. A lot of factors involved yeah. in this year with the, you know, the se- dealing with the pandemic. Of course, they missed those games in the first half of the season and they had to make up for them in the second half. So the mm-hmm. schedule was just brutal. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, you can't get around that. But 
A lot of teams are doing it, though. Yeah, that's true. Not that's like true. it I, hadn't happened to every other team. I, like I guess I, th- I think my team. point is so, is that yeah. I, they haven't been playing with a lot of zeal this year, and I no. don't know if we as fans have had quite the same zeal as well. So yeah, well that's true. I haven't yeah. heard like a lot of people angry about it. Mm-hmm. Like normally, if there's like something small going wrong, I guess hey, understanding now. But it's just a game, right? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they didn't watch last night. <laughs> That's first call. Maybe we didn't watch last night. Were you using that to wipe up the tears? Or were you yeah. Using that to... No, I was you showing my support on. no matter what. <laughs> when a face mask becomes a blindfold. <laughs> there we go. All right. For the rest of the season. <laughs> RJ, up. David, thank you guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> right now it's 942. You're watching GMSA at 9. Food scientists in California are trying to figure out if wine waste could be the new superfood. How grape skin, seeds, and pulp could be beneficial for your gut. All right, welcome back. So let's raise a glass and toast to some wine news out of California. UC Davis scientists say grape skins left over from winemaking could contain nutrition. Belena Jones with KOVR in Sacramento talked with those researchers. Vineyards, wine, and California go hand in hand. The state makes 85% of all wine in the U.S., producing nearly 4 million tons every year. While we sip and savor, food scientists at UC Davis found there's potentially a huge benefit from the grapes we're missing. We can give a second life to the grapes by doing the chemistry. Professor Daniela Barilla found processing residue like grape skin, seeds, and pulp can be reused by isolating sugar molecules in white grapes called oligodermal go saccharides to help feed bacteria in your gut. We have really an epidemic of diabetes, obesity, uh, inflammatory diseases. All of those are linked in some ways to the gut microbiome. Along with the health benefits, it's about repurposing, giving second lives to grapes to avoid waste. There's a huge need to recover waste and especially waste that contain molecules that can feed the gut microbiome. Amanda Sinrod, graduate student researcher, breaks down the chemistry of the grapes, finding ways to harvest the nutrients. Some companies are already using their study to make things like chocolate and health supplements. And this is a great way to basically have a Cinderella story of taking this waste compound and turning it into a food that not only can feed people, but can make people healthier. To be effective, you'd have to consume around a few grams a day. While we can't pop the cork on all the benefits just yet, researchers say a time for a toast is not too far away. Getting this onto the shelves for consumers to eat could be the next best thing in wine. You can drink it, but you can also eat your wine too. And that was KOVR's Valina Joes reporting from Sacramento. So far, the research team at UC Davis has focused on Chardonnay wine grapes. We'll keep you posted. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, so we're actually at 70 degrees right now. Very nice outside. Yep. And it was nice and cool again this morning. It was 50s and 60s to start. But, you know, this is the time of year where we start off cool, but we can make it to some pretty warm temperatures by the afternoon. That's exactly right. what's going to happen today. Dry air in place. Yeah, we were at 60 this morning, but look at the forecast high temperature. 86 later today. 85 Hondo, 91 Creso Springs, 91 at Hondo. It'd be a warm day, but sunny skies. And the key to all this, dry air. Dew points are in the 50s, so it doesn't feel that bad. That is going to change this weekend. We'll see moisture starting to pour in. You'll feel the humidity, and it'll stick around for a while as we head into next week. Look at this time lapse. Soak it in. This is great. Uh, beautiful sunrise this morning. We didn't have any clouds yesterday. We won't have any clouds today either. And uh, temperatures sitting at 68 degrees at the airport. Northeast Julie winds at 8. Dew point is at 56. Temperatures 64 at Bernie State, 71 in Bolverde, 68 in New Braunfels. 72 Carrizo Springs, 73 in Catula. And the dew point tracker shows we'll have comfortable, pleasant dew points next few days. And then they jump up this weekend, 60s and 70s. And that hopefully will lead to some rain. May also lead to a few thunderstorms. We'll discuss that here in just a second. As we look across the country, I think one thing that jumps off the page here is the whole western half of the country is basically quiet. Everything has really calmed down. We had a busy uh, last couple of weeks. A lot of severe weather coming across the country. Not the case today. There are some storms across the uh, Florida Panhandle just north of Orlando with a frontal boundary there. 
but otherwise everyone else is pretty quiet. That includes here in Texas. There are a couple of light returns up there across uh, the Red River, but nothing that's uh, going to cause any problems. Here's forecast going forward. Uh, we will get some high clouds tomorrow and then by Saturday morning. This is where you'll start to feel the changes. Some drizzle, some humidity that starts to come back into play. So Saturday morning is going to be a little damp, but we should go partly cloudy by the afternoon. Now let's talk about Mother's Day. Frontal battery starts to sink south. I don't think it quite gets close enough to have any real impact on us, but there will be a dry line. That frontal battery will, will be around, so I can't completely rule out an isolated storm late in the day, but it shouldn't cause any issues with Mother's Day. At least it doesn't look that way at this point. This frontal battery, though, sort of stalls out, and so by Monday, Rain chances may start to come up a little bit, and certainly by Tuesday and Wednesday, if this thing kind of sits over our area, we could see some better rain chances, some showers and storms. Of course, rainfall is great, but this time of year, we also have to be concerned with the threat for some severe weather. Can't rule that out, so we'll keep an eye on it next week. Here's what it looks like in the seven-day forecast. 86 today, 88 on Friday, 88 Saturday. Morning fog and drizzle, and then partly cloudy during the afternoon. 20% chance of rain on Mother's Day. 20% chance Monday and we'll go 30% Tuesday and Wednesday. This temperature start to ramp up into the 90s. And so with humidity in place, we may be talking heat index next week too, guys. Back to the heat. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 951, about 70 degrees. Animal Care Services wants you to help them empty the shelters. Still ahead, details on their special event taking place this weekend. Good morning. Hey guys. Coming up on live, Channing Tatum joins us. Plus, we'll learn how to build the perfect flower bouquet for Mother's Day. We'll see you soon on live. The Frida Kahlo Oasis exhibition at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens opens to the public this weekend. Today on SA Live, an exclusive interview with Frida's family about the exhibit and see Chef Johnny Hernandez prepare a delicious shrimp recipe from Frida Kahlo Cookbook. That's today at SA Live at 1 p.m. Okay, uh, Animal Care Services and the Bissell Pet Foundation are partnering for an Empty the Shelter adoption event this weekend in an effort to pair dogs and cats with families. That's right. So the Empty Shelters event will last Wednesday through Sunday. And during this time, so you have more time, you can actually do it now. During this time, adoption rates for dogs and cats will be reduced to $25. So these fees include spay, neuter, vaccination, and a microchip. There's Aurora. Yeah, cute. about as cute as they come right there. That, <laughs> All right. How can you say no to those? I know. ACS I know. said in a statement, Animal Care reminds residents that being a pet parent is long-term commitment that should be made thoughtfully. Aw, there's King. Is this King? That's his name? King. Like, King, yeah. yep. Yeah, so. Dogs and cats at the shelter can be searched uh, online uh, at kset.com and appointments to meet or to adopt an animal can also be made there. We have a couple of embedded links within our story. And a reminder from an ACS official, they said, quote, animal care reminds residents that being a pet parent is a long-term commitment that should be made thoughtfully. So be careful. Appointments are strong, strongly recommended. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, guys.